July 4th, 1863 was like no other Independence Day the United States has ever known. The young nation of only 87 years was deeply entangled in a bloody civil war, the most pivotal event in American history. July 4th, 1863 was as crucial a turning point in American history as the same day in 1776. It was the height of the Second American Revolution, a conflict that finally sought to settle the issues of slavery and states' rights that the Founding Fathers had struggled to resolve in the past. When Lincoln was elected president in 1860, seven states seceded from the Union. Soon after, the Confederacy fired on Fort Sumter on April 12, 1861, causing Lincoln to call for 75,000 volunteers to put down the insurrection. Four more states seceded, and the nation faced an inevitable civil war. After two years of relentless combat, the Army of Northern Virginia, led by Robert E. Lee, accomplished the unimaginable, gaining victories throughout Virginia against a larger and more adequately supplied opponent. Lee decided to make a second invasion north, resulting in the bloodiest battle of the war near a small Pennsylvania town called Gettysburg. The war in the east ultimately transitioned into a war of attrition. However, in the western theater of the war, both sides were entirely absorbed with controlling the Mississippi River, the main supply line of the Confederacy. The Mississippi in the hands of the Union would assure complete control of Confederate river transport in the West, splitting the Confederacy in half, isolating Arkansas, Louisiana, and Texas, and would place the Confederacy on a path leading to surrender. By the spring of 1863, Vicksburg and Port Hudson were the last major Confederate strongholds along the river. Both presidents, Lincoln and Davis, expressed the significance of Vicksburg. Lincoln remarked that Vicksburg is the key. The war can never be brought to a close until that key is in our pocket. Davis believed similarly, stating that Vicksburg is the nailhead that holds the South's two halves together. Vicksburg, the Gibraltar of the Confederacy, was located on a bluff towering over a bend in the Mississippi River. The Confederate Army of Vicksburg, led by General John Pemberton, fortified it so that it was impregnable to gunboats and direct infantry assaults. In 1862 and early 1863, the U.S. Army and Navy had separately attempted to capture Vicksburg, and both were unsuccessful. General Ulysses S. Grant, commander of the Union Army of the Tennessee, faced numerous setbacks in attempting to overtake the Confederate defenses. Confederate raids disrupted Grant's communication lines, and Confederate cavalry destroyed his supply base. At one point during the campaign, Grant ordered his men to construct a canal to allow gunboats to bypass the Confederate guns on the bluff. However, this strategy was abandoned because of uncontrollable flooding and the rampant spread of disease. By March 1863, Grant realized the necessity of a joint Navy and Army operation in order to seize Vicksburg. Grant's plan, in a nutshell, what he's proposing is the largest amphibious operation in over 2,000 years. Bringing his army of 50,000 men across a three mile wide river, 400 miles behind enemy lines, is the largest amphibious operation since Xerxes the Persian lands in Greece, three, four hundred years BC. Remains the largest amphibious operation until Operation Torch, the Allied invasion of North Africa in 1942. On April 16th, a fleet of U.S. ironclads, led by David Porter, ran the gauntlet past Vicksburg. With only one ship sunk, the fleet moved south of Vicksburg to facilitate the infantry's crossing of the river. Grant's plan also consisted of a faint attack by General Sherman to distract Pemberton, as well as a cavalry raid through central Mississippi. 
In late April and May, Grant won a string of battles east of Vicksburg, which included the capture of Jackson, the capital of Mississippi, as well as the severing of the Southern Mississippi Railroad. After these battles, Pemberton concentrated his troops inside Vicksburg to wait for reinforcements. After two unsuccessful and costly assaults to capture the town, Grant set siege upon Vicksburg, resulting in Union soldiers digging trenches for protection, one of the first times in U.S. history that trench warfare was used. The townsfolk suffered throughout the siege as Union bombardments ravaged the town, causing them to construct caves into the bluff for protection. Once you are in a siege situation, which Vicksburg finds itself in, uh, there's really only two possible outcomes, relief or surrender. And the Confederacy is never able to launch a successful relief. Vicksburg, after 47 days of siege, and really, you have to give them credit, the defenders a superhuman effort on the Confederates' part to defend and hold the city. But it's not good enough without that relief. Uh, eventually, the, the outcome is what the outcome was, the surrender of Vicksburg. And the war, the war turns. On July 4th, 1863, Pemberton surrendered, and Grant received 60,000 arms and 12% of the Confederacy's cannons. However, not able to provide supplies to 30,000 Confederates or to transport them to prison camps, Grant allowed them to be paroled. Many of these Confederates instead enlisted back into the Army and participated in later battles during the war. The U.S. government realized that the parole of Confederates and prisoner exchanges benefited the South more than the North, resulting in a decline of these practices. When Lincoln received the news that Vicksburg and Port Hudson had fallen, he exultantly declared, the father of waters again goes unvexed to the sea. The capture of Vicksburg was a critical turning point of the Civil War that led to Union victory in April of 1865. Although Gettysburg is famously characterized as the high tide of the Confederacy, Vicksburg was just as significant, if not more so. Since the Confederacy no longer controlled the Mississippi, the South was split in two. Without the use of the river and the Southern Mississippi Railroad as vital methods of transportation, the Confederacy could no longer sustain itself in the war. The Union victories at Vicksburg and Gettysburg also ended the interest of European nations such as Britain and France in recognizing the Confederacy as an independent nation and intervening in the war on the South Side. Domestically and diplomatically, the events of July 1863 injured the South beyond recovery. After the Vicksburg Campaign, Grant fought a war of attrition in Virginia until Lee's surrender at Appomattox. By 1865, the 13th Amendment was ratified, abolishing slavery, and the nation entered into a period of Reconstruction. The Civil War is often referred to as the last old-fashioned war and the first modern war in world history. New technology such as siege artillery and ironclads and innovative military tactics became a vital aspect of a new type of warfare in the next century in which trench fighting was essential and hand-to-hand -hand combat was foolish and obsolete. Today, the Vicksburg Campaign is seen as one of the most brilliant campaigns in the history of warfare. Vicksburg shifted the course of events during the Civil War, which ultimately led to the preservation of the Union and allowed the U.S. to emerge as a world power in the next century.